Okie dokie, hello everyone, welcome back to episode 22 of my Battle Rovers Football Manager 2017 save. So obviously the last episode we drew 1-1 against Newcastle and then just about beat West Brom, a Craig Conway goal in the 89th minute. And then we had League 2, no, nah, League 1 side, fair play, fourth in League 1, not too shabby then. Uh, but yeah, League 1 side, Scunthorpe United uh, away from home in the FA Cup fourth round. Unfortunately, we did in fact go 1-0 down, it took a Danny Graham penalty to take it to a typical FA Cup replay uh, but I do think we should be able to beat him at home kind of disappointed about that but uh, I, I made sure the players knew exactly how I felt to be fair Sonogo had plenty of chances to win the game I think if we go and look at the stats yeah we had four clear-cut chances to their one so really we should have won the game but really unlucky at times anyway so if we do uh, or hopefully when we do beat Scunthorpe we're going to be up against championship side in Brighton in the next round of the FA Cup. So, you know, it just kind of makes you wonder if we can beat Scunthorpe and then take on Brighton, who are a league below us, a team we should really be looking to beat, then we might even end up on a decent FA Cup run come the end of the season. There's a part of me that, that kind of wants us not to focus on the FA Cup because I really want us to try and, and, and grab fifth place or maybe even creep into the top four we're only a few points off but talking about the top four that's why we wanted to do this episode Southampton have really under cloud Puel, however the hell you say it have really been punching above their weight so far in the league this season their third place now like I said in the last episode it's basically kind of turned into La Liga we're both Mourinho's United and defending champions Wenger's defending champions in Arsenal kind of battling it out at the top but these few European spots are more than still up for grabs. West Brom, West Ham and Liverpool could still get into the mix. So we're only in February. But, you know, this is why the Premier League is the best league in the world. Look, just look at how tight it is. So transfer deadline-wise, we didn't bring anyone else in other than, of course, Mohamed Traore, who we discussed in the last episode, who is currently in Belgium trying to gain a uh, national uh, a European nationality of some sort, but Derek Williams did leave us for a decent amount of money, I think, 375k, more than what we bought him for, and probably good riddance in the end, decent championship level player, not really good enough for the Premier League, and all he was kind of doing was loaning, so he's gone to Karlsruhe SC, as you can tell, I can't really speak German, uh, and we loaned out David Raya to Real Betis, where he will be getting or should be getting first team action. Doesn't look like it's going to happen, but you know he's, he's, he's gone back to his home country in Spain. So yeah, next up against Southampton, it's third place against sixth place. If we manage to beat Southampton, it will put us on 45 points. So, I mean, it really depends on how the Tottenham and Man City games go, but it could, in fact, move us into the top five, which I think is, is phenomenal, just the thought of it. Uh, just the fact that we're able to sit here in February and be able to say that is amazing in its own right, considering we only just got promoted. But uh, yeah, off to St. James's, St. James's Park, St. Mary's Park, and uh, let's hope we can make it three points. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, St. Mary's Stadium, or apparently um, Bob the Builder's building yards at Owen and Owens and Son construction what the f is this I've never actually seen this before because I, I always used to play on 2d <laughs> um, hmm so what's the uh, what's the attendance what the hell is this obviously I mean I kind of get it that they must be extending their stadium or something like that so what's today's attendance well I mean, I mean, if the bench is there, where the hell do they go? All oh, right, the tunnel's up there. Right, it's must work. Anyways, let's focus on uh, what we're doing tactically. So obviously, uh, we've got 
a few important players out injured. Fabio is no longer with us. Um, he's currently in hospital. Uh, same with Kadura and same with Gufran. So if we are going to win this game, it's going to be really tough. Fortunately, though, for us, even though Southampton have a team that's miles better than ours, uh, their main danger man, James ward pros is also injured. So, yeah. Southampton are really going to be looking to try and play a possession game. A lot of their goals are going to come from crosses, crosses into the box towards Charlie Austin. So that's something we're going to have to try and counter with him being such a physical striker. But um, scouting before the game, they are actually the worst team in the Premier League for tackling. So from our perspective, we're going to try and start the game off relatively defensively. I've tried to slow the tempo down as well because if you slow the tempo down, uh, your players won't be as rushed to try and, and pass the ball around and, and, and so on, which means they're less likely to make mistakes. And given that we are the weaker side, if we can hold on to the ball well, not really worried about Southampton potentially tackling us, then we can frustrate them. And, and as long as we've got the ball, I feel like we'll always have a chance of scoring because we do have some magical players uh, in the side. And if we can keep moving forward and uh, eventually give the ball to Andre Gray, then... Uh, Hopefully it'll turn out pretty well for us. So the only other change that I made other than the tempo was pissed around a little bit with the opposition instructions. Made sure we're talk, uh, we're 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 talking, tight marking, talking. We're marking Charlie Austin tightly. Uh, don't actually want to tight mark. Do some, that's one of the things I like about doing these videos because sometimes I'll, I'll do something incorrectly, or my assistant manager will apply advice incorrectly. Then I'll come back to it and be like. Ooh, okay, but yeah, so uh, we want to we want to mark Charlie Austin tightly. We're gonna go in hard on all three of the Southampton central midfielders. They're not that physical. They're very technical, which means if they start getting the ball, if they start getting time on the ball, they're gonna start playing passes for days uh, over our defence and so on. So, uh, so yeah, that's something uh, we're gonna try and uh, counteract. And uh, of course, because most of Southampton's goals this season have come from crosses. We are going to be trying to show their wide players onto their weaker foot, naturally. But again, there's only so much you can really do. The reason why I've left the defensive line on slightly higher is because, obviously, slightly higher on defensive is a lot lower than slightly higher on attacking. Um, and I'm willing to start off with it right now because Charlie Austin is really more of a target man. 13 acceleration, 13 pace. We should be able to cope with that at the back. Um, the only real uh, threat they pose is through Sofiane Bufal. And uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on him. Uh, August Simpson's going to have a fun time. Uh, he's not exactly the best defensively. But, again, you know, we've got to be able to adapt. We've got to be able to, to slowly ease our way into games and see what happens. But there we go. Good tackle from Lennyham. Um, well, okay, it was a foul. But, you know, making sure Southampton know who the boss is. But uh, 12 minutes in, we've not really done much, to be honest. But we've kept a lot of possession. So I'm not actually going to change our mentality just yet. We are the better side. But Southampton have a chance from a corner here. McLean should be able to pick this up. And, uh, oh, no. Oh, God. Good save from Steele. Um, really poor, that, from James McLean. Uh, credit where it's due to Dusan Tadic, though. Yeah, it just looked like he uh, was that offside. Let's take a look at that again. No, onside, fair play, Charlie Austin. But, yeah, credit where it's due to steal. Good save, that. And uh, we're now going to switch to a standard mentality, but we're going to concede. Okay. Hmm. Jose Fonte, first goal of the season at the back post, scores from that corner. Uh, that definitely weren't part of the plan, but that's what Southampton have. They have uh, players who can put in quality deliveries into the box. And uh, Lenny Han... Praised him when he fouled for the first kick of the game, and uh, he, he, he lost his man. So, time to change things around, I think. Kind of disappointed, because I think that's probably the first corner we actually concede so far this season. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of disappointing. We're going to try and retain possession a little bit less, switch to an attacking mentality, demand more of the players, try and get the ball forward, particularly given that we've got two strikers up front, uh, and, and, and see what happens from there. Lenny Han picking up a yellow card now, so... Praised him early on, but am I going to have to eat my words? Let's see if we can score a corner of our own. Andre Gray. Oh, yes. Anything you can do, Southampton, we can do better. Dario Dumic with his first goal to compliment Jose Fonte's first goal. Really good delivery there from Augustinson. 
good header from Lenny Han, who's really been hot and cold this game. A very good save, to be fair, from Fraser Forster. But Dario Dumic, the Bosnian beast, in the right place at the right time. So, I'm going to switch back to, uh, to defensive. And, uh, yeah, we'll leave things like that for now. Just try and hold on to the ball. Go in at half-time at 1-1. I'll be pretty happy with that. Give the players an opportunity to... Uh, to, you know, charge their batteries a little bit. And uh, I think it's still anyone's game, really, come the second half. We've really missed the quality that Gufran offers us, I feel, on the ball in them wide areas. Danny Graham, 6.4. Might make sense here to actually move 2-3 in the middle of the park. And I, might, I am going to do that, in fact. Um, so, who are we going to bring on? We're going to bring on Damien Letalic. We'll go with two box-to-box -box midfielders for now. Hopefully that will just create an extra passing option for these wide playmakers who, to be honest, are having a complete fit so far today. Um, we'll switch to a standard mentality and uh, go from there. Right, We're going to try and go a little bit more direct now, try and change it around. So going to switch to a counter mentality. Going to try and utilize Andre Gray's pace up front. Make him an advance forward. Whoops, not a target man. Advance forward and just try and get in behind Southampton's Relatively high line. Switch these guys to attack as well. And we'll uh, swap shorter passing around to a slightly more mixed approach. Take off work ball into box and uh, just go from there. We need to try and regain control of this game. And in match team talk might help do the trick as well. And again, it's very tough. It's very tough to try and go into into an attacking mindset because that'll result in our fullbacks starting to get forward maybe too much than they should be. And with Buffal on the pitch. Oh, wait, no. So Rodriguez has, has come on. Sorry if it's been a bit of a slow episode, but this is kind of a, an important game. This is kind of how I roll. So Shane Long has been brought on and he will start causing us problems. Um because of his pace so we'll, okay here's the plan here's the plan ladies and gents we're going to keep Lenny Han on we're going to move Letalic into midfield and we're going to actually bring Yaya Sonogo on as a target man we're going to stop trying to use your side trap we're going to go a little bit go we're going to go we're going to go a little bit more direct um, we're going to start pumping the ball into the box and get stuck in a little bit more. We'll uh, change Steele's distribution to target man. Try and get that ball to Sonogo. And now for the last 20 minutes, try and go in all guns are blazing. We've dropped our defensive line to try and counteract Shane Long's pace. But I do feel like with dropping our defensive line, we should hopefully be okay. We've just got to be able to keep a hold of that ball in midfield. So good tackle there from Dumich, and this is our chance to go direct. That's what we wanted to do. Andre Gray now will pounce with his pace as long as he doesn't lose the... Oh, my God. Good ball from Mulgrew. Gray's in. Got to score now. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. No. Oh... God, what a shocking game all our strikers have had so far today. Right. Uh, Corey Evans is going to come on for Lenny Han. He's had a good game, to be fair, Lenny Han. But, uh, oh, for God's sake, crap goal kick. Win that ball back. But he was looking a bit knackered on 69%. Oh, my God. Poor tackling from us. Rodriguez scores. No, oh god, what a game! This could still go either way, you know. Southampton in third place. We're gonna switch back to standard. Demand more of the players. Come on, give us a good ball up to Sonogo. We can win it physically, and oh, we can't win it in midfield. Tadic is in, and I think this is it. Southampton are oh, gonna score. Ah, oh, man. How the hell we conceded that? That's from like a, an impossible angle. <laughs> I 
I mean, it came down from our right hand side where we've got Jason Lowe on as right back, and yes, yeah, he's, he's he's not really Premier League quality, and this is it. Shane Long will add insult to injury. No, he won't. But Southampton get an important win for them. Uh, a win that we really needed to move into the Europa League spots. I think the reason it hurts the most is because we responded. We made changes. And Andre Gray should have scored. Um, but what are the clear-cut chances? Look, yeah, one on one. I mean, they scored from a corner. We scored from a corner. We didn't really play badly considering we were the away side. We came with a game plan. Our game plan worked, really. I think if we'd had maybe Fabio at right back and had had that extra bit of quality with Gufran on one of the wings, then it may have ended differently. But just to concede this goal, in the manner in which we conceded the goal, there I bought Corey Evans on. You know what? I probably shouldn't. Not physical enough. He, if it was Lenihan on, he'd have won that header. He'd have won that header. And... But at the end of the day, still can't concede them goals. And that could end up costing us come the end of the season. So, yeah, disappointing, really. But, hmm. Well, that is going to be it for this episode. So, kind of disappointed, to be honest, as you can tell. <sighs> and we finally lost the game. So, next up, we have Scunthorpe. Let's see if we can, you know, rally the troops, win that game at least, and, and get the lads back in a positive mindset. After that, we'll have West Ham and Stoke at home. And then we'll go for a cheeky double episode where uh, I'll uh, cover the United game, then play the Leicester game off camera and make sure the Tottenham game is also included in that episode. So, uh, yeah, gutted we've lost. But there's still a lot of football to be played. And even if Spurs and Man City... I mean, the annoying part is that Southampton have now created that gap. Right, OK. See you next time. Oh, and uh, we've hit 300 subscribers. So massive shout out to all 300 subscribers. Uh, let's make 500 our next milestone.